Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. I have a product review for you today. Something to put on the analyzer. Kind of been looking forward to test one of these things out. Been sitting around here, it's starting to get dusty. But yeah, Fozzy Audio sent me a preamp to review. And that's what I'm going to do. Hi-Fi made fun. Okay, in the package here we have a owner's manual, power supply. Uh, looks like we got a remote control with uh, actual buttons, not one of those cheapo membrane things. And the unit itself, let me get out of the packaging here. So what we have here is the Fozzy Audio P4 preamp. So on the front panel we have the power and mode switch. It accepts three different inputs indicated by the little lights here, which one's selected. Separate bass and treble controls and a volume control using that metallic orange color that Fozzy uses with their brand. That's just the uh, remote detector port there. Looking at the back we have three RCA inputs. That's kind of nice because I have three different sources that I want to channel into one amplifier. So I might use this if it turns out to be pretty good. Of course we have the output. We have a pre-out connector there. Tone control bypass switch and a gain switch. So you can select the gain if necessary. Ideally you want to use the minimum gain necessary. And we'll check all of this out. Of course we have the power input there, 12 volt DC. So yeah, this will be neat to put on the analyzer and see the distortion with the tone controls in versus switched out and the contour of these. Are these well done controls or not? So let's get this thing hooked up and get the tests underway. Okay, got all the connections made to the Quant Asylum. So we'll jump right into the testing here. Later on I'll add some loads to the output. These are 1K 1% metal film resistors. I want to see how that degrades performance loading it down. 1K is a pretty heavy load for line level because you know, most hi-fi amps are probably going to be around 10K. This normally wouldn't see such a heavy load on its outputs, but yeah, I'm just curious to see how it performs loaded down. Okay, this is what I call the kickoff test with a 1 kilohertz signal just to see how things are going to go. You can ignore the power measurement. We're not measuring into any load, being a pre-amplifier. Line level, so I'm using 0 dBV, which is equal to 1 volt. And 1 volt going into a power amplifier is probably getting close to clipping of that power amplifier, depending on its gain. So that's just kind of a reference point I'm using here. And look at the distortion. Extremely low, 0.00042%. I know that's getting close to the limits of my Quant Asylum. I can almost call this below measurable limits. I think the Quant Asylum could get down to 0 0.0002 at this level. Optimize, I can go very slightly less, but yeah, we're pretty much down at the limits of measuring here. So what you're seeing there is kind of a combination of the preamp and the Quant Asylum's distortion. And that's really not surprising given the high performance of op amps. On a lot of data sheets they tell you that you have to use special techniques to actually measure the distortion because their equipment will not be able to properly do that. Okay, anyway, uh, we are getting some 60 hertz, 120 line frequency noise in, but that's pretty low. It's below 100 minus 100 dB anyway, so that's probably getting in through my cables. I don't know. I do have that switch set to the 3 dB position, and well, that's what we're getting, so that's matching up. I am bypassing the tone control circuit. Let me switch that on. Tone controls will be flat. We'll see what that looks like. 
Not really any effect on distortion or gain. That's good to see. What's interesting though is a little bit higher noise. You can see that 60 hertz jumped up to minus 90 dB in the 120. You know, it's up a little bit. I think the noise floor did go up slightly. Why would that be? Well, you're switching in more electronics and there's more opportunity for noise to get in. But like I say, it didn't really affect the distortion performance at all. I'm kind of curious though, if I hook a battery up, a 12 volt battery, and unplug its power supply and see how that affects the noise level here. That will tell me if it's coming in through the power or if it's coming in through my cables or somewhere else. Okay, I got the 12 volt battery connected. Had to battle with those barrel type connectors. Some didn't fit at all. The ones that would plug in would not make continuity, so I had to shove some fine strands of wire in there to make continuity. Now we're connected. Then I moved the cables around and actually got that lower. Turned off the overhead lights, which took that down another 5 dB. Look at that. No more electrical noise harmonics. And, God, look at that. That's way down there. About 137, minus 137. Huge improvement. So, uh, let's switch on the uh, tone controls and see what happens. Okay, yeah, the tone controls, it picked up just a little bit. Still no harmonics or anything. I remember before there was some noise up here. I think that's switch node crap from the switch mode power supply. But, you know, even before it was well below minus 100, so that's not an issue. I just want to see the amplifier on its own. And, yeah, extremely low noise floor and, again, excellent distortion performance. Okay, frequency response. Surprise, surprise, it's flat. So here's 20 kilohertz. It's, I don't know, the tiniest fraction of a dB down. After that, it slowly rolls off. Probably a low-pass filter in there. And at 20 hertz, it rolls off a, a bit more. It's like a fifth of a dB down. I would still call that excellent. Right channel's red, left channel's blue. You can see there is a slight bit of difference between the channels. Well, with intolerance of the components, that's, you know, each line is a fifth of a dB, and that's like a quarter way up from that. That's like a twentieth of a dB of difference, was, which is absolutely inaudible. Okay, I switched the tone controls back in, and they are set flat and doesn't really affect the upper region. There is a bit more of a deviation between channels, about a fifth of a dB. Down here you can see a slight bump. That's just the accuracy of the potentiometers, I'm sure. They're not going to be zeroed out at the center setting perfectly. It's just tolerances there. But, you know, it's, it's still really flat. I mean, it's still within a fifth of a dB, so it's doing pretty well there. So let's take a look at the tone control response. Okay, we have pretty nice tone control action here. I have the bass and treble set all the way clockwise for the max boost of the bass and high frequency here. And you can see we're getting 12 dB of boost on both sides. Ignore this stuff, it's just an artifact of acquisition here. And pretty good action because you can see in the mid-range here, it's not affecting it very much. It's like 1 dB at 1 kilohertz. So yeah, pretty nice action. So let's turn them all the way counterclockwise and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more than 12 dB cut. You know, close to 14 on the bass and treble side. And again, it's not affecting the mid-range that much. It's only minus 1 dB. 
So I'd say that's pretty good tone control action there. Do you really need that tone control switch? I would say not because the controls are pretty flat. I mean, within a dB is just simply not audible at all. And it doesn't really affect the distortion. So, so however you position that switch doesn't really matter if you have the tone control set flat. So I forgot to test the gain switch. I went back and tested that. So at the 6 dB setting, I was getting about 6 dB. And at the 9 dB setting, which it is now, I'm getting about 9 dB. So that's working just fine. Okay, we're looking at the preamp's output, which is the analyzer's input. Comparing it to the total harmonic distortion. 0 dB is 1 volt output which depending on the gain of your amplifier is probably going to be around clipping. Again, the power and the gain of your amplifier would matter. I would say this region between minus 10 and 0 is a listening, what I would call a the listening range. And you can see it's beautifully flat here, way down like we measured earlier. This region I would call your dynamic headroom. And yeah, we have plenty of it. You know, this goes up to uh, about 13 decibels or so of headroom there. 13 dBV. So yeah, no problem with headroom with this thing. Because about any amp you connect this to would be clipping well before that point. Frequency versus distortion measured at three different signal levels of minus 9, minus 3, and positive 3 dBV. And the positive 3 dBV line, you know, most power amps this is connected to would probably be into clipping at this point. And, of course, we do get the most distortion here. And it jumps above the point zero zero one line in the low hundreds hertz range. And these two measurements here are what I would call in the normal listening range. And you can see it doesn't go above the point zero zero one line. So, you know, again, this is across 20 to 20 kilohertz frequency range. And man, is that excellent. But you kind of expect that with modern day op amps. Okay, I ran the frequency versus distortion test at three different signal levels. Now with the one kilo ohm load resistors on the preamps output. And you can see it really didn't harm it that much. In fact, um, well, at the lower end, it's very slightly higher. It's a little over 0 0.001, but that's such a low figure anyway. And it's not much different up here. Again, I think it is pretty close to the limit of the Quant Asylum's ability to measure. And uh, I do really like seeing the high frequency distortion to be very low as well. One thing I do note is that load resistance causes a 6 dB decrease in output signal, which would indicate an internal 1K series resistance on the output not sure why they would choose such a large value. I mean, it doesn't really degrade performance any, but it does seem kind of a high output impedance for the preamp. But again, it's going into probably at least 10 kilo ohms with a normal hi-fi amplifier. Okay, opened up the preamp to see what's going on inside. So power comes in here it goes to the switch mode supplies generating positive and negative voltage for the op amps we also have a 7805 probably to control this or supply this microcontroller and that controls about everything you know the indicator lights all the switching all of these relays, these are Amaron branded relays, they should be pretty good quality. Infrared remote, we have a motor here for the volume control. A little gearbox, probably with a, a uh, oil type clutch, whatever they call that. So yeah, we got the microcontroller. 
We have an any 5532 output buffer. And yep, it's about 1100 ohms of output impedance. Because I did see that there's a 560 ohm resistor. It goes to the relay. Then another series 560 ohm resistor. Then it meanders over here to the uh, output buffer. Which is socketed if you want to change that for whatever reason. And on the bottom we have a couple surface mount any 5532s. You can see all the parts around that for the tone control and whatnot. You might be saying, uh, why don't they use some modern high-end op amp? Well, the circuit doesn't have a lot of gain. And as we uh, measured, it performs excellent. Another beauty of the microcontroller design is you don't have to bring any signals up to these switches. Because you've got the gain and the bypass for the tone control so you're just setting a state on the microcontroller pin and depending on that setting it sends the signal out to whichever relay it needs to turn on or off and that's close to where the signal is flowing anyway so you don't have to run the signal wires over here it's just a much better design that way and well not sure what else to say on that. I'll put this thing back together. It seems to be really well engineered with decent parts. Pretty quiet, doesn't add much to the noise floor and connected to the power amp here. Okay, it's time to rate the Fozzy Audio P4 preamplifier. What's it gonna get here? Oh, it gets fuzzy kittens. Pretty much into the top rating. Well, if you consider the price of this thing, it punches well above its weight. It's an excellent little preamp. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I could nitpick a few things. That's why it's not all the way into Fuzzy Kittens. But, I mean, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's a very good product. And not much more to say, so thanks for watching.